Get ready to unlock the mystery of growing a thriving medical practice. Sherlock Doc is here to help. Crafting a vision, mission, and value statement for your medical practice is a key component of your marketing and branding. These three elements tell customers in the community who you are and what you stand for and help to differentiate you from your competition. But what's the difference between the three? A vision statement outlines your ideal view of the future. This is the best possible outcome you could imagine for your medical practice and for the impact you'll have on the community at large. Think of your vision statement as your dream for a better world and be sure to focus on the community your practice serves. Your mission statement details how you plan to go about achieving such a vision. It connects the work you do in your medical practice with the overarching goal of realizing your vision. While the mission statement should be more granular, focusing on the type of medicine you practice and patients you serve, it should also be written with the vision statement in mind. Your value statement is like a toolkit for achieving your mission. It lists the things that are most important to you as you carry out that mission and serves to show patients how your work will reflect your personal values. The length of each statement is entirely up to you, but your vision, mission, and value statement should be clearly visible in your office and on your website. Get ready to unlock the mystery of growing a thriving medical practice. Sherlock Doc is here to help. When it comes to effective marketing for your medical practice, one technique is not enough. You need to attack from all sides and create a varied marketing mix that resonates with your target market on multiple levels. There are typically four areas of a marketing mix to consider when deciding how best to market your medical practice. First, think about the product. The services you provide at your practice need to differentiate you from the competition and serve a strong need within your target market. Your product should have a unique selling proposition that shows how you are different from other doctors and better equipped to serve your patients. The second ingredient in your marketing mix is price. Aim too low and you'll work longer hours for less money and never be able to make a profit. Aim too high and you'll prevent prospective patients from seeking your help. Consider what your ideal patients can afford and base your pricing on their needs. The third element of a marketing mix is place. The physical location of your office, together with the online real estate you've claimed with your website, create real and virtual places to connect with and market to your patients. Finding the perfect place is crucial to your practice's success. The fourth and final element of a marketing mix is promotion. Promotion includes everything you do to get the word out about your practice, including direct mailings, online marketing, advertising, and public relations. Don't be afraid to mix up your marketing mix until you find the perfect recipe for success. Get ready to unlock the mystery of growing a thriving medical practice. Sherlock Doc is here to help. Before your medical practice opens for business, it's important to create a strategic marketing plan that will help you find new patients and put your practice on the map. A marketing plan is a blueprint that outlines all areas of your marketing, from direct mailings and referrals to online marketing and social media. Here are some of the most important elements of a strong medical practice marketing plan. A clear-cut timeline. Develop a short and long-term timeline that describes your marketing plans both now and in the future. This timeline should include how you plan on reaching out to prospective patients as well as when and how often. A strongly defined target market. Your marketing plan should include a clear description of the type of patients you'd like to market to as well as how you can serve them better than the competition. Offline marketing tactics. Keeping your target market in mind, decide which offline marketing tactics such as direct mailings, advertisements, referral programs, and press will resonate most strongly with your prospective patients. Online Marketing Tactics Be sure to include plans for online marketing as well, including website design, social media, email marketing, and search engine optimization. Budget your marketing plan should include a budget breakdown for every area of your marketing. Determine how much you can spend on marketing each month and set aside time to determine the ROI of each marketing tactic in your plan. Not all marketing tactics are right for all medical practices. In the beginning, trial and error is the best way to see which methods get results and which methods don't. 
The most important thing to remember when creating a marketing plan is that you will need to continually tweak your plan based on patient response. Get ready to unlock the mystery of growing a thriving medical practice. Sherlock Doc is here to help. Communication and branding are two integral parts of medical practice marketing, but what's the difference between the two? Branding refers to the symbols, designs, logos, colors, and language you use to differentiate your medical practice from the competition. Good branding is seamless across multiple platforms. A patient receiving a direct mail postcard should have the same experience of your brand as a patient clicking on your website. This means using the same branded components everywhere, from the walls of your office to the wall of your Facebook page. It also means creating a very specific experience for the patient. Is your practice warm and friendly, cutting edge and modern, or down to earth and efficient? Your logo, slogan, and marketing materials should reflect and create this type of branded experience. Communication, on the other hand, refers to the manner in which you promote your brand in the world. Once you have a firmly established brand, you're ready to communicate your brand's promise to your target market or your patients. The way in which you communicate says a lot about your brand. Some practices will communicate most effectively through traditional advertising in trade publications or on television, while others will have success communicating online. The way in which you communicate and what message you choose to communicate will be determined by your patient demographics. Taking the time to develop a strong branding and communications platform based on your patient's needs will make your medical practice much more memorable, cultivate patient loyalty, and help you stand out from the crowd. Get ready to unlock the mystery of growing a thriving medical practice. Sherlock Doc is here to help. Before you choose a location for your new medical practice, it's important to perform a market assessment of the location. A market assessment consists of demographic research on the patients, competitors, insurance providers, and policies that will influence business at your location. Armed with database projections for the future, you'll be able to decide if renting or buying a particular office location is a smart business move. You'll need two tools to perform your market assessment. The first is the PEST analysis, which measures the political, economic, social, and technological potential of your location. The second is the SWOT analysis, which measures the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of your location. Whether you're starting a group or solo practice, it's important to conduct these analyses with the help of your staff or fellow physicians. PEST and SWOT give you the tools to measure data, but the analysis of that data must be done by you. Because of this, it's a good idea to get a second or third opinion whenever possible. By conducting a PEST and SWOT analysis for your potential office location, you'll be able to pinpoint patient trends, determine influence from nearby competitors, and uncover potential weak spots before you sign on the dotted line. Get ready to unlock the mystery of growing a thriving medical practice. Sherlock Doc is here to help. Choosing a name for your medical practice could be one of the most important business decisions you ever make. The right name can last a lifetime, establishing your business in the community and facilitating word of mouth recommendations. The wrong name can make you easily forgettable or damage your reputation before you even get started. Here are five guidelines for finding the perfect name for your practice. Number one, choose a name that's easy to say out loud. Just because a name looks great on paper doesn't mean it won't leave patients tongue-tied when spoken aloud. Opt for something simple to say yet memorable. Number two, choose a name that sets your practice apart by incorporating a benefit or location-specific term. For instance, a practice named Seattle Family Chiropractic tells us where the clinic is located and who it's for. Choose a name that can easily be promoted online. Check that the URL is available and that there is not already another practice in your area with the same exact name. Number four, choose a name that supports the values and style of your personal brand. If you want your practice to come across as warm, friendly, and family-oriented, stay away from cold clinical names. 
Number five, choose a name that's descriptive and fun, such as 24-7 Surgeons or The Awesome Optometrist. A descriptive name will allow you to add associates and partners to your practice without changing your name, brand, or image. Hold out for a practice name that you love, that represents the core values of your brand, and that feels good when you say it out loud. Get ready to unlock the mystery of growing a thriving medical practice. Sherlock Doc is here to help. More and more consumers are making buying decisions based on online research. Building a strong online presence will help prospective patients find your practice and make a buying decision on their own, saving you time and money trying to acquire their business. A strong, professional-looking website is a key marketing component of any successful practice. Your website serves as a virtual storefront for your business. Poor design and development sends a strong message to your patients. If the quality of your website is poor, chances are the quality of your service will also be poor. There are virtually endless options for website development, but here are the top three choices used by most medical practices. First, you can design your site yourself using a platform like WordPress, Wix, or Weebly. This is by far the most cost-effective option and will give you total control over website updates. However, it's only an option for those who are relatively tech-savvy and able to dedicate time to website maintenance. Option number two is outsourcing your website development to a freelance web designer using a site like elance.com or upwork.com. Prices for these types of services typically range between $400 and $1,500 depending on the developer's experience. The third option is to work with an established web development firm that specializes in medical practice web design. Costs will depend on the size of your practice and how complicated your website needs to be. The cost of working with a large firm typically begins in the low thousands and can reach as high as five or even six figures. When considering your web development options, think of your patient's needs and how you want them to interact with your website. The seamless patient experience you create in your office should be extended to your online presence as well. Get ready to unlock the mystery of growing a thriving medical practice. Sherlock Doc is here to help. An effective medical practice advertising strategy uses online and offline advertisements that are hyper-local in their focus. Online advertising can include placing ads in local newspapers and magazines, producing television and radio commercials, getting listed in your local yellow pages, and adding your practice to the welcome kit typically sent to new residents by mail. However, offline advertising should be used in conjunction with online advertising, which tends to be less expensive and helps you reach a wider target audience. Online advertising includes pay-per-click ads such as those that appear on search engines like Google, ads placed on relevant websites that are popular with your target market, Facebook ads or other paid social media promotions, advertising on local websites and community forums specific to your city or neighborhood. Another great way to spend your advertising dollars is to invest in search engine optimization or SEO. Doing so will help patients find your practice through organic online searches. When a patient searches for a new doctor, they do so by typing in relevant keywords to a search engine like Google. A search for Seattle physicians, for example, will bring up hundreds of search results. And SEO will help ensure your practice is at the top of the list. Begin with a set advertising budget and create an advertising strategy based on your patient's needs and communication style. If you serve elderly patients, for instance, offline advertising may be the most effective approach. If you serve millennials, you may have better luck with Facebook advertising. Get ready to unlock the mystery of growing a thriving medical practice. Sherlock Doc is here to help. The logo you choose for your medical practice should embody your company's brand and everything you stand for as a business. A great logo breeds patient loyalty, helps you become recognized in the community, and establishes your practice as a top performer in your field. Without a strong logo, you'll be forced to constantly rebrand your practice wherever you go and risk the marketing mistake of being utterly forgettable. 
The three main types of logos include font-based logos, which are simply distinctive sets of lettering. Sony, Microsoft, and IBM all use this type of logo. Illustrated logos, which include a visual representation of what the company does. This can mean a bouquet is added to a florist logo or a stethoscope is added to a doctor's office logo. Graphic logos, which contain abstract images instead of text. Examples include Apple, Nike, and Volkswagen. A font-based logo may be too generic for your office, which needs to stand out from all of the other competing practices in town. A graphic logo won't hold much meaning for your patients in the beginning, since branded associations usually take years to build up. Choosing an illustrated logo that clearly demonstrates what you specialize in is a great way to make a memorable impression with your patients. Try a website like 99designs.com or elance.com to find a freelance graphic designer to create your logo. From there, be sure to use your logo in all of your marketing materials to create a seamless branded image across multiple platforms. Get ready to unlock the mystery of growing a thriving medical practice. Sherlock Doc is here to help. There are many different ways to promote your medical practice without breaking your marketing budget. Start with a welcome kit for new patients. Your kit could include discounts on follow-up visits, coupons to local vendors in your neighborhood, magnets and pens with your practice's name and address, or incentives for referring a friend. Next, promote your practice by becoming involved in your local community, participating in health fairs or health-related events at local schools and hospitals. Try public speaking at your local Chamber of Commerce or other community group. Book yourself on local talk shows or get interviewed by local publications to promote your practice. Work with a local charity or volunteer to meet prospective patients. Finally, focus on referrals in order to promote and expand your medical practice quickly and effectively. In addition to simply asking your current patients to refer their family and friends, you can develop a referral system that rewards patients each and every time they recommend your practice. This could include financial discounts for each new patient they refer, priority appointment booking services, or other benefits that will encourage patients to spread the word about your practice. The best way to promote your medical practice is to build solid relationships with your patients and other service providers in your community. Focus on providing excellent care and getting the word out through locally based initiatives. Get ready to unlock the mystery of growing a thriving medical practice. Sherlock Doc is here to help. There are two effective ways to use events to promote your medical practice, by participating in healthcare related events in your community and by hosting your own events at your practice. Events you may want to attend include medical conferences, health fairs, community meetings, charity auctions, and volunteer activities. Participating in these events positions you and your practice as a contributing member of your community. You'll solidify relationships with current patients while meeting new prospects and potential business partners. Hosting your own events is another effective way to promote your practice. Events you may want to host include 5K run walks, charity fundraisers, open houses, safety fairs, and Q&A sessions with doctors and on-call nurses. When deciding which events to participate in or produce on your own, look at patient demographics. Age, marital status, education level, and income all determine the health needs of your patients, as well as which type of events they're most likely to attend. Don't forget to promote your event heavily both online and offline and analyze your results after the event to determine your return on investment. Get ready to unlock the mystery of growing a thriving medical practice. Sherlock Doc is here to help. With so much attention placed on digital marketing, direct mail marketing often gets lost in the shuffle. While it may seem more labor intensive and expensive to develop direct mail campaigns for your medical practice, the effort is well worth it. Studies show that direct mail campaigns are becoming more effective precisely because less practices are reaching out to prospective patients through the mail. Direct mail campaigns can be used to keep in touch with current patients or obtain new patients for your practice. 
Current patients can receive direct mailings in the form of birthday cards, thank you cards, annual checkup reminders, or special discounts. When using direct mail marketing to find new patients, work with a mailing list broker to target prospects in your local area. By analyzing demographics such as age, gender, education level, and income, you'll be able to target potential patients who live near your practice. Be sure to create marketing materials that will appeal to a specific customer segment. For example, a postcard from an OBGYN clinic targeting 35-year-old women will look different from a family practice newsletter targeting middle-aged couples. Direct mailings are a powerful way to keep current clients engaged while expanding your client base in your local market. Get ready to unlock the mystery of growing a thriving medical practice. Sherlock Doc is here to help. Online and print publications give growing medical practices a chance to market to prospective patients while increasing their authority as medical experts. But with thousands of medical publications in print and on the web, how can you tell where to spend your precious marketing budget? Here are four proven ways to make publication marketing work for you. Number one, Set specific goals. What outcome do you want to achieve with publication marketing? If your goal is to find new patients, the publication you choose will be very different than if you are looking to build an expert reputation on a national scale. First, determine a specific goal for your marketing campaign which will help you create a strategic publication marketing strategy. Number two, mix it up. If your goals include finding new patients and establishing your practice as a leader in your chosen field, you'll want to appear in a variety of different publications. This might include advertising in well-respected medical journals, giving interviews in local newspapers, and using services like Help a Reporter Out HARO, to appear in national magazines and other publications. Number 3. Choose the right publications. The publications you target should be read by those people you want to market to. If your main goal is to find new patients, there's no point in pursuing publication marketing with a highly specialized medical journal they're unlikely to read. Number four, analyze your... After pursuing publication opportunities in medical journals, trade papers, online magazines, and local media, calculate the time and expense in terms of your return on investment, or ROI. If it took you seven hours to secure an interview with a national newspaper and the interview resulted in three new patients, it's clear that your practice has made a profit and you should focus on that type of publication marketing on an ongoing basis. Get ready to unlock the mystery of growing a thriving medical practice. Sherlock Doc is here to help. Your physician profile is one of the most powerful tools you have in your marketing toolkit. Not only will your profile be used on your practice's website, it will be displayed on third-party websites that show up when prospective patients perform Google searches. For this reason, crafting the perfect profile statement and choosing the right picture could mean the difference between finding a new patient and losing out to another physician. Your profile should always be written with the patient in mind. Steer clear of complicated medical jargon only understood by other physicians. Instead, focus on your personal philosophy and the benefits the patient will receive by working with you. While it's important to include training, certifications, and education in your profile, you should also include personal information that helps the patient connect with you on a more human level. Choose a color profile photo that is clear and that represents your practice's brand. If you specialize in treating life-threatening illnesses, a huge smile may not be appropriate. If you are a pediatrician, on the other hand, including a warm, friendly photograph will instill trust in parents. Your physician profile should be an extension of you and should accurately represent the values of your medical practice. Get ready to unlock the mystery of growing a thriving medical practice. Sherlock Doc is here to help. Education is an important part of cultivating lasting relationships with your patients. In the information age, patients have more options than ever for obtaining information about their health, their medical insurance, and all of the areas that impact their relationship with you, their physician. In order to help your patients make informed decisions, you need to be available as a trusted educational resource in a variety of areas. 
Patient education brochures, web content, newsletters, and events should cover the following important areas. Health insurance choices and policy changes, nutritional education, family safety education, privacy policies, and more. In order to decide what type of patient education program to offer, find out how your patients prefer to absorb information. Some populations may want live events, Q&A sessions, and one-on-one -on -one time with medical staff. Others may prefer to get educated on their own terms by reading your blog or email newsletter. Develop comprehensive patient education systems that address both learning styles and see which one is more popular with your patients. From there, you can focus on what patients want most and build an education program around their questions and concerns. Remember that patients have endless educational options when it comes to their health. If you don't provide guidance and expertise, they are likely to seek out other sources that may provide misinformation. Finally, be sure to include patient education material such as class schedules and upcoming events with your new patient intake forms. Get ready to unlock the mystery of growing a thriving medical practice. Sherlock Doc is here to help. The patient experience in your medical practice is the number one factor that determines whether or not that patient will return, recommend you to friends, and leave you a positive feedback online. The patient experience is an opportunity to exercise quality customer service in addition to a great bedside manner. That means that every interaction in your office from filling out intake forms to dealing with insurance should be as positive and painless as possible. The patient experience begins before the patient ever steps foot in your office. The swiftness with which their phone call is answered and the ease and convenience of making their first appointment both contribute to their perception of the practice as a whole. Once they arrive for their appointment, everything from interactions with staff to their seating options in the waiting room creates an unforgettable experience for the patient, whether good or bad. In order to create the best patient experience possible, put yourself in the patient's shoes. Think of how you like to be greeted and cared for when visiting your doctor and incorporate what you like into your own practice. For instance, you may want to offer bottled water or other beverages to patients in the waiting room or make sure every patient is personally escorted out of the office after their appointment. Small details like these can make a huge difference in the patient's overall experience of your practice and will serve you well in retaining current clients and obtaining new referrals. To learn more about medical billing, insurance, coding, outsourcing, and everything you need to establish a successful healthcare practice, Follow all of Sherlock Doc's adventures on the DoctorsBusinessNetwork.com or Doctors Business Channel on YouTube.